And my Americanism is going to be on Fort Moultrie, or rather Fort Sumter, as it was originally called. Get this out of here. Tom really had me messed up. Okay. When the American Revolutionary War broke out in 1775, the city of Charleston and the county of South Carolina was the center of commerce in the southern part of North America. The citizens joined together with other colonists in opposing the British Parliament attempts to tax them. Militia recruitment increased, then word arrived, and in April of 1775, the battles of Lexington and Concord had happened. Throughout 1775 into 1776, militia recruits arrived in the city from colonies all around. The city's manufacturing tradesmen began to produce war materials, and defense fortifications began to take shape around the city. Fort Sullivan is a part of the city's of for a series of fortifications on Sullivan's Island. South Carolina built to protect the city of Charleston. The first fort was called Fort Sullivan, was built out of palmetto logs, which inspired the current flag of the state of South Carolina, and South Carolina became, had a nickname of the Palmetto State. The fort was renamed for the U.S. Patriot Commander in the Battle of the Sullivan's Island, General William Moultrie. I'm dressed in the uniform of my ancestor, John Austin. He was, may have been part of this battle. Now, his uniform did not have epaulets that I have. These epaulets are part of the SAR uh, uniforms that we uh, wear when we go to parades and stuff like that. And as most of you know, I was the uh, state commander last year. That's the reason why I have this little star Back in the day, they would not have had any of this on their uniform. Next, there was a flag. And the flag had liberty written on it. Some of the flags that you have probably seen, these are called Moultrie flags, named after uh, the commander have liberty written down here on the bottom. There was a big dispute as to whether it was written on the crescent or on the flag itself. I think this was not true. It was on the crescent. The reason why I say this is because artifacts found around the battlefield have liberty written in the crescent. And liberty would not have been written in the crescent if it had been written in the flag. So I'm a big believer that that's the original Fort Moultrie flag. During the Battle of Sullivan's Island, uh, the flag was shot down. And uh, William Jasper was a sergeant. Under enemy fire, he jumped down off the ramparts grabbed the flag, brought it back up, and reattached it to some debris flying, uh, debris on the rampart, and had the flag back up. On June 28, 1776, the defendants of, uh, by Colonel Moultrie, he commanded the 2nd South Carolina, which I'm dressed as, and the 4th South Carolina Artillery Brigade numbering 435 men. Around 9 o'clock that morning, a British ship fired a signal gun indicating that the battle began. Less than an hour later, nine warships had sailed in and started pounding the fort with uh, cannonballs. Uh, one of the most interesting facts about palmetto logs is they are not like trees. They don't shatter. The palmetto logs from the fort did not crack and splinter. Rather, they absorbed the shock. 
And it's been reported that some of the shot even bounced off and hit enemy warships. <laughs> which I kind of believe because uh, I've se actually seen demonstrations of how uh, rocks thrown at the Palmetto when I was a kid bounce back a lot further than you throw them. The British eventually captured Fort Sullivan as part of the siege of Charleston in the spring of 1780 and renamed the fort Fort Abernock. Nevertheless, the colonists won the war and British troops departed in 1782 at which time the flag uh, was presented to Charleston by General Nathan Green, commander of the Southern Regulars. I have Fort, Mul Fort Moultrie coins that I want to pass out to everyone in attendance here today. Now what I'm doing here is trying to get something to start started here uh, in the uh, Dallas SAR. We have coins for each of the 13 colonies. And I have printed out, for your convenience, a little statement that all you have to do is read for all of the 13 colonies. And I have a sign-up sheet right there in the middle table. Uh, Tom Whitelock already has Delaware, and I would like volunteers to pick a day and get their sign-up sheet, get their uh, the sheet to read. It's very short, it's a page and a half, most of them are just a page. Please volunteer and grab one and uh, make this something that we can be proud of here and do all 13 uh, colonies. I have coins for you and the, the printout, so you don't have to bring anything but your coins and your printout. And Tom's going to have the flag each, each time. Is, one? Is there any questions about what I'd like you to do? No questions. So everybody's going to volunteer. Right? Yes, sir. I'll take next month. Sounds good. We need one more for next month as well, for July. Uh, it will be Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey for next month. Yeah, I'll take the UVA. That's my ancestor. That's where your ancestor comes from. Anybody has an ancestor from New Jersey? No one. Well, somebody I think I had New Jersey. You do? I think. Okay, that's next that's month, next month then, okay? No, I'll go, I'll be here on the Congress. Mark will Congress, okay. Mark will have New York. Part you volunteers. Yeah, New, New York. York. I'm sorry. Start with an N. New York. <laughs> Start with an N. Okay. Yeah. That could have been Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> or North Carolina. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, well we need one more for next month. Please don't hesitate to volunteer. Um, it's real easy to do. It's all printed out. All you do is read it. 